Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the last problem from the contest 327 of lead code. The problem's name is time to cross the bridge and the problem states that there are k workers who want to move from uh, move n boxes from an old warehouse to a new warehouse. You are given two integers n and k and a 2d integer array time of size k into 4. So the, integer, uh, the array we have been provided is a two dimensional array and over here each of those entries would have four values that is that left to right pick old, right to left, put new. So these are actually the time required by the ith worker to do th these operations. Uh, the warehouses are separated by a river and connected by a bridge. The old warehouse is on the left bank and of, of the river and the new warehouse is on the, the old warehouse is on the right bank of the river and the new warehouse is on the left bank of the river. Initially all the cave workers are waiting on the left side of the bridge. To move the box, the ith worker can, so these are the operations he can perform. So he can like, uh, move from left to right then pick, uh, like pick up a box from that then he'll move to left to right and then put the new box down like he'll put the same box uh, to the new location down a worker i is less sufficient than a worker j if either of these conditions holds so either his efficiency is less so by efficiency what they mean is that the time he takes to cross the uh, bridge is more than other worker so that is one way to say that his e efficiency is less or let's say if two workers have equal efficiency, so both of them are taking equal times to cross the bridge, uh, then we'll say that whosoever has a higher index would be less efficient. I think there's nothing much to say about this. This is pretty understandable. After that, they say that the full following, ru uh, following rules regulate the movement of the workers through the bridge, that if a worker X reaches the bridge while another worker Y is coming, uh, is co uh, crossing the bridge, X waits till there's a uh, at the side of the bridge, if the bridge is free, the worker waiting on the right side of the bridge gets to cross the bridge. If if more than one worker is waiting on the right side, the one with the lowest efficiency crosses first. If the bridge is free and no worker is waiting on the right side and at least one box remains at the old warehouse, so the old warehouse that is present at the right side of the bridge, if a box is still present over there, then the worker on the left side of the river gets to cross the, uh, cross the bridge. If more than one worker is waiting on the left side, the one with the lowest efficiency crosses first. So with that, I think the problem is clear. So it's just a simple uh, implementation problem, not a simple, I'll say it's somewhat complicated, but yeah, it's implementation problem doesn't require knowledge of DP or any other thing for that matter. So let's try to generalize what they're saying. So they're saying that, uh, let's say this is the bridge. Okay, so this is what my bridge looks like. Not a good bridge, definitely, but yeah, this is my bridge. And there are several workers. Uh, this is the old warehouse. So on the left, uh, on the left side, I have actually a new warehouse. So this is the new warehouse, right? On the right side, I have a old warehouse. Old warehouse. What I need to do is, and the number of workers I'm actually having is k. So there are k workers in total over here. There's just three. So k is equal to three. So there are k workers in total. Now a worker has to go to the right side of the bridge, pick up a box. So this is a box, right? He'll pick up a box, then come back. Right. And there are several rules that, that need to be followed. O also, when he'll come back, he'll put the box down into the new warehouse. There are several rules to be followed. So one of the rules is that if a person is waiting on the right side, so if there's a person who's waiting at the right side, he'll get the first priority. So if, if there are workers waiting on the right and left side as well, so the worker at the right side would get the priority and he can move first. So this is the first rule, right side gets priority. If more than uh, one person is waiting on either end, so let's say on the right side itself, there were like two people. Now at a time, only one person can cross the bridge. So who would be crossing the bridge? So the person who will be, who would be less efficient. So less efficient person gets priority. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So these are the two rules that need to be followed. Also, if you think about it, it's it's unnecessary to go to this side of the bridge if no box is remaining. So let's say if all the boxes have already been picked up, then it's unnecessary to go over here. So a worker would only go to the right side of the bridge if there's still some box remaining. And how many boxes are there in total? So there are n boxes in total they have given. There are k workers in total. So how do we do, uh, would you do that? So let's clear it up a bit. Let's clear this, let's clear this. Let's clear this, let's clear this, let's clear this as well. So what we can say is, Intuitively, it's easier, easier to think about 
that there are some people over here so these are the people who have actually uh, or these are the workers who have actually placed the boxes or the new boxes into the warehouse but haven't started adding up over here right so let's say this is a queue for the left side this is a queue for the right side so a fixed a, a number of people could could be in the warehouse or in the new warehouse who have actually placed the boxes in the new warehouse and there could be some workers who are waiting to pass the bridge so they would be in l there could be some workers who are waiting to pass the bridge through the right side they would be an r there could be some workers who have like picked up a new box from here but haven't reached here yet right so these are the four times uh, four kind of queues we'll be having now who would get to this queue so this is a qr right let's just name the queue in a way that it makes more sense so let's say it's the it's the bridge queue so let's name it bq br let's name it bl so this is the warehouse queue let's name it v w r or w l let's let's name it w r with that what we can say is that only the people who would have placed the box at this location who would have picked up the box at from this location at a time that is uh, less than or equal to the current time right would go over here that makes sense similarly the people who would have uh, like kept the box in the new warehouse at a time less than or equal to the current time would add on to this queue that also makes sense pretty intuitive what about how would they cross the bridge now they they can cross the bridge right so firstly we'll have to check that if a uh, so when will we do uh, when will be doing this checking so we'll check if r is not empty or while r is not empty simply so there could be multiple people in r and all of them would be getting priority over the l1s so w uh, so b dot r sorry for the writing so while b of r is not empty right we'll try to make them cross the bridge that's easy also once this is done so after this is done b of r would be empty so at this point if b of r is empty then i can make b of l cross the bridge crosses the bridge but wait what about the people who are actually waiting over waiting over here so we'll have to take care of them as well so what we'll say in the same loop we'll say that if their value so if the time taken by them is less than or equal to the current time car time or car time whatever you want to call it then we'll be pushing it pushing them onto this how how about the people who are actually waiting in this particular queue but have different efficiencies so as they had mentioned that a person with a less efficiency get a, gets a priority so how can we tackle that so in order to tackle such a scenario what we can say is that i can maintain a priority queue right a priority queue basically is just a max heap So over here, what I want to do is that a person who's less efficient. So basically, the less efficiency means that he takes more time to cross the bridge. So basically, time for left to right plus time to right to left is greater. So whosoever has a greater time has a less efficiency. So I can use a max heap definitely. I'll just sto uh, store the time taken to cross the bridge in this max heap, and hence at the top of the heap, I would be having the person who's least efficient. So let's say this is my max heap, and at the top of it, I would be having the person who's least efficient, and he would be made to cross the bridge first, and then the other person, and then the other person. So yeah, that's it about it. So there's no like complex uh, logic behind it. It's just that such questions, when they come in contest, it becomes harder to uh, code them up and submit them in the uh, right time. Also, there's another uh, catch over here. So they are not asking us that last time where the person uh, when a person actually places. Uh, the box in the okay so this is what i'm talking about so they are not asking the last instance of the time when the person actually places the box in the new warehouse they are rather asking about the time when the last person crosses the bridge from r to l so this is another information we have so that means when we are talking about the current time we'll have to take this in a manner that it represents current time or current time represents uh, the time when the last person crosses the bridge this is where i messed up in the 
in the contest so i didn't read this properly and i and hence i messed up at the end i tried making some uh, logical changes but that didn't work for me so yeah i couldn't do fourth in the contest itself but yeah it wasn't a tough problem per se so with that let's get to the solution let's see the code okay so let me go to the code so this code actually i haven't written this code this is uh, the code that i actually wrote myself was giving tl in the uh, like it was giving a wa in the solution and uh, in the contest itself and it was pretty long although the logic was some, uh, kind of similar i was also using the same thing priority queues and all that stuff but yeah the logic was somewhat uh, like it it was lengthy so this was the code i picked up from solutions and this made more more sense to me it was more concise easier to explain so this is what we'll be going through so initially i'll be making four queues or you, you can say like two of them are priority queues and one of them is it actually they implement the same thing but it made more sense to take a priority queue for the queues that are waiting on the bridge because over there we had to sort it uh, via the efficiencies so it i'm taking a maxip so this is basically a maxip as we discussed in the solution so in this maxip we have the people who are waiting on the left side of the bridge and on the right side of the bridge then we have sets so set actually stores values in a ascending order so at the starting of the set i have the person who has the least time so over here when i'll be storing so i'll be storing them as a yeah so i'll be storing them as time so the first element would actually describe the time at what time the person came over here and the second element is the index so let's say time comma index over here this is the maxip and over here when i'm storing a value so the first value is the efficiency efficiency and the other is index because i want to store the people so if a person is actually waiting in a queue so the least uh, least efficient person would be given the priority so i want to keep the efficiency as the first priority also if two people have the same uh, efficiency then the one with the greater index would go first hence the second uh, second uh, parameter over here is the index itself so then for all the elements or all all the workers we have we push them onto the uh, queue on the left side of the bridge so that's what i'm doing over here this time 0 plus time 2 is actually the time taken for, uh, to go from left to right plus right to left that is his own efficiency so i'll be adding that up and pushing them on the queue so while n so n over here is actually the number of boxes so since our entire aim is to move all the boxes from left to right from right to left sorry so that's why i'll be iterating over the boxes itself as soon as the number of boxes are done i can uh, like break the loop other than that there's another variable bridge t so this is the time taken for the last person to cross from right to left i hope this makes sense so what we'll be doing in the uh, in the uh, in the beginning of the loop itself so we'll be checking if the if there's any person who's in the left warehouse or the new warehouse right and his time is less than the bridge time so the time at which uh, he has been able to place the box in the new warehouse if it's less than the current time or the bridge time then i'll place this pers particular person into the queue on the left side that's what i'm doing over here i hope this makes sense and then i'm i'm going to erase this particular uh, worker from the warehouse list or warehouse queue after that i'm trying to do the same with the right side as well so if a person is there on the right side uh, uh, warehouse that is the uh, old warehouse and his time is less than the current time then also i'll do the same computation i'll push them into the bridge that's on the right side of uh, right side after that i'll check that if there's any person on to the right side uh, right side queue of the uh, queue so the right side queue actually gets a priority of the over the left side queue and uh, if there's any person then we definitely have to move him so if that is the case then i move that particular person i increase my time by the time that he takes to cross the bridge post that i do the same logic for the left side as well so these are actually the exactly th same things for the different sides once i'm done with that so there's just one edge case that i want to cover what if none of these cases worked so what what if both of these cases uh, none of these cases worked so in that case what is happening is that my current time 
is actually having a value that is lower than the value the people standing on the queues need to cross the bridge in that case i'll have to update my current time that would be the max of the current time either and add one to it so let's say i'm the current time right now is 9 then i'll say that it would be max of either 10 because 9 didn't work for me so let's take the next instance of the time or minimum of next till plus next hour so next till plus next hour is that what would be the time required by the person who's waiting on the right side versus what's the time required by the person who's waiting on the left side so whosoever has the less time uh, so minimum of the, both those left comma right i'll be pointing my uh, current time by that at the end when i'm able to place all the inboxes i'll be returning the bridge t so this is the current time or the time when last person crosses the bridge yeah that's it about it once you're done with this you can try it out and yeah, it works let's submit it yeah, it works as well just one tip over here and the tip is that i myself i'm not comfortable or i don't actually like doing implementation based questions but they are equally important it, you never know like when you'll sit for placements or even when you're doing competitive programming and you get a implementation based question i tend to get frustrated on it and i stopped doing it because i was doing over here and then when the first wa came i stopped it there and then itself although the logic was right i could have made some changes could have improved my rank but yeah that uh, so the thing is that you should get out of your comfort zone or the things you really like when you're doing competitive programming you'll have to solve questions that you don't really like or are not really into so yeah that's it for the video if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below i'll definitely try to answer them until then keep coding keep happy bye bye